Hello guys, welcome back to The Source with me, Morigi Gichovi, and we have the lovely Amanda Seals. Do you say that right? Yes. Uh, how do I say yes? Ndio. Ndio. Yes. <laughs> um, Amanda is here on a tour to Kenya and she's visited a couple of places, Nairobi, Mombasa, Masai Mara. How's your experience been? I've never been to Kenya. Uh, the only place I've been to Africa is Togo and Ghana. And for a lot of Americans, if, you know, for a lot of African Americans, like coming to Africa is always just a deep experience. Yeah. And this was no exception. Uh, we were able to visit Nairobi and spend quite a few days in Nairobi. Then we went to Masai Mara and we also and we got to go on game drives and then we went to Mombasa so I feel like I got a good uh, crash course yes. in Kenya and everyone has been so kind and well everyone specifically in Nairobi I don't know about Mombasa but in Nairobi everyone has been just like so hospitable and um, I think it's a place I know that it's a place I would I can't wait to come back about food what did you enjoy I will tell you now I'm not a big food person you know, some people are very much about the food, but I'm not a big food person. I did like my ugali. Um, amazing. Yes, amazing. That. And yes. Okay. Yes. Meat. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, greens. I'm not a big greens gal. I know. Yeah, I'm I'm greens, greens, Amanda. I know. Black Americans don't like it either, so it's what it is. Um, I had a lot of chapati. Uh, and I got to try some different fruits. So, you know, we had our passion fruit. We had, I, I've never had mangoes in Kenya. Ooh, so it's sweet, mm -hmm. very good. Yes. And I had some tree tomatoes, which were a whole new delicacy. Yes. Yeah. Okay, we'll love that for you. Um, talk to us about you partnering up with One Love Travel Group and how the trip has been overall. So, you know, uh, I just got an email one day. And I check my email, and uh, just and I'm saying that because some people really pride themselves on not checking their emails. Yeah. Like you're missing out. I got check to go to Kenya because I checked my email. And uh, One Love Travel Club had reached out to me about ambassadoring his trip to Kenya, and uh, we had about 15 people with us on the trip. And for a lot of people, it was their first time out the country. Yeah. Um, for many of us, it was their. For many people, it was their first time in Africa, and I think for all of us, it was our first time in Kenya. And we went to these different places. And I think it was a really unique group because nobody was annoying. And that's always a treat. About owning, owning your Caribbean roots and what you love about it, the music, the food, what do you love? Um, you know, I really feel like my Caribbean roots were just such a part of my early childhood experience. You know, like I went to Grenada at like seven months. Like, I mean, I was there on the beach eating sand early. And I feel like what it's done is it's allowed me to have a, round, a more broader understanding of the world. Um, and it's also just given me a, another layer that I've gotten to explore uh, outside of my black American heritage, which is so deep and rich and full. And, you know, when it comes to Grenada, um, we have a different cuisine, you know, we have a different accent, you know, we have carnival, which I'm not a party girl, but I respect it. Um, and Grenada is a very revolutionary island. So, you know, people like Maurice Bishop from Grenada and um, many others. I mean, even Henri Christophe, who was a very big part of the Haitian Revolution, was born in Grenada. A lot of Haitians get mad when we hear that, when we say that, <laughs> but it's true. And... I think all of these elements, you know, shape me as a person and have just been, um, I don't know, they've just been extra little pockets that I get to peek into to discover more about myself and more about the way this world works. Uh, let me tell you a fun memory. So during COVID times, we had verses. Remember? Yeah. And then Biniman versus Bounty Killer. And you're on the chat. I remember reading Amanda so Seals. <laughs> go, go, Beanie, go, Bounty Killer. Yes. How was that experience for you and cheering on for this dancehall music and what it means it to you? Actually, it actually ended up not being a good experience because it was during that verses that I found out that a lyric that I thought I knew I did not know, and it felt like all of Jamaica was making fun of me <laughs> for not oh knowing the lyric because I had typed it in the chat and uh -huh. I. I put old dog lightweight and everyone was like, she said lightweight, ha 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 ha, laughing 
and Jamaican. And it was the, the lyric is old dog like we, you know, so they would not let it rest. They would not let it rest. The sauce, when I tell you, they had me in the sauce, okay? So, but up until that point, it was very exciting. I was in my childhood bedroom because I was staying at my mother's house during that time. And I was just like, bo, bo, bo. Yes. It was it a good was time. so exciting. I remember it kept me through COVID days. Yes. Um, what's your favorite joke to tell? Do you have any? Any jokes about white people? So there's too many to name. Um, let's They're talk also about the easiest jokes to tell. Okay. So it's a bit of a low hanging tree. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a low hanging tree tomato. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, let's talk about career, um, acting, being on insecure. How did your character? How did you in any way like relate with your character as Amanda and the character on Insecure? Yes, because my character was a truth teller. And I feel like, you know, as we saw the seasons go on, she was basically the only one, like, being truthful with herself yeah. and being truthful with everybody else. Yeah. And that's very Amanda. Like, my friends don't tell me things until they're ready to receive the truth. They know. Truth to power. That. Yeah, truth to power. The truth train is coming through. Truth, truth. It's happening. And that brings us to the real. Okay. Okay. So I watched you on the show, and I thought you did amazing, and it happened the way it happened. Uh, but if you could change anything about the whole experience what it, would it be um if I could have changed anything about the whole experience I think I would have simply just done more research on getting people to tell the real about the real <laughs> before I did it nice one <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> because if I touch on this topic I feel like it will be a whole conversation that that I don't want to have. Do I? Yeah, <laughs> we in the motherland. Leave that over there. Okay, let's talk about mental health and you protecting. You know, as an entertainer, like there's a lot that comes with everything, and protecting your mental health is key. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Um, I'm a. I think one of the ways that a lot of entertainers protect their mental health is by being picky about reading comments. <laughs> Um, and also being selective about who they do interviews with. Um, and I know that may seem like, what do you mean? But you need to do interviews with people that are going to be respectful of you as a person and not just as like a tool for their clickbait, you know? And also people who um, want their audience to be respectful. So sometimes, you know, you do an interview and then you see the comments and you're like, you just won't let them talk about me like that in the comments. And they're like, oh, well, that's just how my audience expresses themselves. And it lets me know, like, this is not a safe space. So that's one of the ways. Um, also, you, know, you got to take breaks. Got to take breaks. But I think the number one way is, and it takes some time to, it took some time for me to get to this um, opportunity, but I try to only work with people I like. Who do you like? Oh, I like a lot of people. But I'm just saying... For a long time, you have to just work with whoever you get work from. <laughs> and that's not always going to be like an enriching environment or it's not always going to be a safe space, right? And at this point, I feel like I'm really fortunate to get to really just only do what I want to do and make fun money. If I'm not going to have fun doing it, I'm not doing it. If that changes in the future, well, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. What would you say you're most passionate about? blackness and the protection and preservation of everything that goes along with it. There are three things that people don't know about you. Well, they probably don't know them by now because I don't want them to. <laughs> what mean, are you willing to share? <laughs> I'm like, I'm on this internet every day. They all know damn near everything. Um, what they don't know about me? Um, I don't know. I have a broad back, but I'm an A cup. Uh, I, <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> see, I'm in the, <laughs> I'm not LGBTQIA plus, but I am in the little bitty titty committee. Um, okay. Which is the LBTC. Uh, what do people not know about me? I, I really think I could learn Swahili. Yes, you could. I do. I think, and let me tell you why. Because when I hear certain languages, they sound so foreign. Mm -hmm. Like Portuguese, it doesn't matter how many times I hear Portuguese, it sounds like otherworldly. Obrigado. 
But when I hear Swahili, it sounds like I've been hearing it my whole life. So I feel like I would be able to pick it up. So that's what I have to say about that. Um, I think I'd be Ngozi and Swahili. Um, no, Nzuri. Nzuri means good, right? Yes. <laughs> Learning. Good job, Amanda. Good job. <laughs> Um, let's talk about um, <laughs> okay. Let's talk about like your 2022 projects and what you hope to do mm-hmm. this year. Um, what I hope to do this year is be less stressed. <laughs> That's what I hope to do this year. Uh, what I really want to focus on is building up my YouTube this year and giving you guys more content from my view. I felt like I spent last year really trying to sell shows to studios and these places that really don't understand like my voice and really aren't interested in the type of content that I create. And so I really was looking down on YouTube if I'm being honest. And then I was very fortunate to meet a number of black women over the course of last year who really spoke truth into me and convinced me like, no, YouTube is made for people just like you, people who have their own vision and have their own um, following and don't want to have to deal with 70 people in order to get something to the people. So I'm building up my production company to be creating content on a regular basis for that. People like my podcast, Small Doses. So Small Doses will now be filming it on a set so you can hear it through audio, but you can also watch with beautiful images. Uh, And we'll also have other content that's coming like Amanda Reacts and Rebels and Radicals. So look out for that. And I am starting a syndicated radio show that you can also hear internationally. So the Amanda, to hear that. yeah, the Amanda Seal show you can hear anywhere where you listen to podcasts. So uh, we've been really excited to hear uh, to see that there's people listening internationally. So I hope that my Kenyan audience will take a listen. And it's every day, Monday through Friday, the Amanda Seal show. So you'll get news, you get pop culture, you get relationship talk. Of course, you get my hot takes. <laughs> and um, and then I have other stuff that I'm still, you know. Working on. Any show that we should expect to watch? I'm taking a break. Let me tell y'all. Shooting television is very boring and tiring. It is. Some people really like it. I don't like it. You're there for like 16 hours, you know, and then you got the makeup on, you got the wig on, your head is hot. Um, so I'm taking a break. I was on a TV show for six years. I was yeah. very fortunate, very lucky to have that experience. And really what I'm focusing in on now is doing work that is a, l- a bit easier on the body and the mind. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yay. And thank you for doing the show with us because, you know, you do things with people you like. That means you must <laughs> like us. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, thank you for having me. This was an honor. I appreciate it. Amazing. Asante sana.